Okay, we're back to the new camera here and another numbskull game. The last of the independence, this is a few years old, but Patrick provided it to me as a review copy so that I could take a look at this game. And I'm kind of interested in this one, to tell you the truth. Uh, not to say, actually, I don't think there's anything I haven't been interested in, except maybe the California gold, the whole idea of orange ranching didn't really excite me too much from the beginning but that was a cool game this one i don't know how good a game it is we'll see uh but the topic the automobiles in in this sort of post-world war ii era when there were still remaining small corporations uh or small companies putting out cars is a particularly interesting one in fact I can remember uh, when the film Tucker came out, I so wanted to see it, but I don't go to movies or anything. And I was lucky enough just a couple of years ago to be able to see it on uh, uh, HBO or something like that when uh, when I was on a business trip. I, didn't, I don't get to see. I'm sure I could find it online if I'd really want it, but it was cool to have it come up. Anyway, this is covering that period. And let's take a look at what some of the pieces are. The goal of this game is going to be to collect victory points. And I think these are the victory point shits. Um, there is a description of everything that comes in the game, and this is the only thing they could be, but they don't discuss why they're two different colors. I assume change or something like that. I'm going to use ones and fives. I think that works well with this number of players, but you may want to shift the numbers. They essentially should be unlimited from what I can see. You also get this game board, which is going to be kind of your worker placement type of location. You're going to be putting pieces on these in order to uh, gain victory points by being the best at certain uh, types uh, of automobile related stuff, either the actual design of the cars, the engineering of the cars, or how well you promote the, your product. Each company, and there are a bunch of them, there's 10 of them, has a number of sort of core capabilities that they have. And you're going to have to meet these each turn uh, with your little discs, which are your money or resources. You also have some spare resources that you don't start the game with. You might end up picking those up. You might also end up not having enough uh, cash. You also have these cards, which they're nice. They have a decent flexibility to them, but there's sort of a stickiness to the finish. I'm hoping that wears off uh, with multiple plays because as it is, it's tough to shuffle them. But they seem pretty sturdy uh, and decent otherwise. So these are gonna give you an event on them, uh, which you're able to do. So for example, here a costly additive for engines and sports cars and luxury cards. Uh, players may remove up to two discs from each of those. And I guess that's on other people or something. I don't know. Uh, and then it has a trend, which is going to be things that you're kind of aiming to do well in because you'll get a bonus if you manage to do well in those. Talk about that in a bit. But the rules, fairly small, just four little tiny pages, one of which is all pictures, um, are a little too sparse for my taste. I had to read through them a couple of times, set the game up to really get an idea of what it's going to even be about. I'm still not entirely sure, obviously, about the best strategies and stuff like that, but I kind of expect to read the rules and understand what it's about. One of the key things is that you've got this sequence of play, and that's going to be performed multiple times uh, for each of, once each for each of these different uh, sections of the board. Okay, let's go over what we do. So for the start of the game, you get a company at random, and I'll put these excess back. They each have a, a description of the person and um, who's running the company and some of the history of the company as well on the back, which is really cool. I looked through a couple of them, but uh, I don't really feel like doing the whole thing. Uh, when it comes with a little bag, which you're going to be using for some randomizing, it uses a system that looks kind of like uh, that which was used in, let's see if I can find it, uh, something I just played, oh, it's not here, um, or it's not there, it's down here, uh, the 1912 election bull moose that should be coming out soon that I did very recently. Okay, so what happens in the play? Well, at the beginning of the game, you're going to randomize the turn order, and I should do that, but 
we're not gonna be starting playing. Uh, you get 20 of these discs, 10 of which are gonna be on your company profile and your core capabilities, whatever those are. They're not described as such, but that's what they are. And then you get four cards. Uh, the game's gonna generally last three turns, but there's no reason you have to limit yourself to that. Uh, I suggest, hey, the more people you have, uh, the less turns you wanna play. <laughs> because it's going to take longer but you know there's no real reason to limit yourself on it except that if people there the game should not last too many turns uh simply because you'd start probably uh beggaring the suspension of disbelief capability if these independents lasted too long because conceivably they have to be competing with the big companies as well which aren't in the game so then we have this um uh, Players are going to be uh, set up on the turn order track, and when they don't want to do a certain action, they go into the passing lane, which is not something about, you know, surpassing. It's just you're passing for the rest of that round. Okay. And then uh, as a new action comes down, you put them back, all back in their same order in the turn order. Finances are going to determine what the turn order is each turn after the first. So... For models, engineering, and promotional categories, you're going to each have their own uh, turn sequence. And what happens first is the selective disk allocation. So if you're doing the models, you're going to be able to take from this pool, this is your selective disks or resources that you haven't expended. And you can put some of them into uh, any given category. Once you've placed in a category, you can't place in that category again. I don't know. If Category is the right word for it. Um, section is what they use. Category is the big thing. So once you place in a specific section, so for example, if I put one chip in two-door coops, I can't come back and put another chip in there, although somebody else could. You can put one of theirs. And as I fill these, uh, eventually I could decide I'm passing, and I could move my chip up to the passing lane, and then I'm not going to be playing in that section of the round again. You're gonna do this uh, for the top row, and then the next, and then the next. Once everybody's placed all that they wish to, uh, or everybody's gone, what, seven times or whatever, here it's only six, uh, then you have your required disk allocation, which is these. You don't, despite the name, you don't have to allocate these where they say. Uh, but you have the option to do so. You take them off your card. So, for example, if I'm in the midst of the models section, I'd take off of here and I could put this in a utility vehicle, etc. And I can look at what everybody else has, uh, both on the board and on their required chits, to see whether or not I, I have a chance of getting uh, a victory that I want. Okay. And this is not done in multiple rounds. Uh, each person on their turn decides whether to use any or all of their required allegations. Then we go to card play. And again, in turn order, each player may select a card from their hand and play it using its effect, whatever the text is. If the card is applicable to the current uh, section so for example this is only applicable to the models section if i'm in a later section of the game i can't play it at that point this one would be uh, promotions some of them won't have an image i think and they'll be applicable at any time um, and i don't have to play if i don't want to play a card i can pass but then i can't re-enter the card play it's the same as always i shift up into the passing lane where i'm not allowed to do it anymore uh, then we do competition, and in each of the sections in one category, what we're going to do is we look to see uh, what the status of the discs is. If only one person has a disc in that section, or has discs in that section, they get to keep one disc in that section, and the other one's going to, and whatever's left goes into the return pool. If multiple people have discs in a given section, then all the discs are scooped up from the section 
dropped into the bag. One is picked at random. This is kind of like the election uh, prospects over in uh, Bull Moose. And that person wins. The winning player gets one token on the section and all remaining discs will be placed of his will be placed in the return pool. All discs belonging to people who did not win the draw are going to be halved and put into the return pool. This is important because this is your money. Uh, this is your resources in the game. So if you bid it up with someone, you have a chance of losing a lot of resources in that sort of fight to be the best at that, whereas they get all their resources back essentially. Um, okay, after an entire uh, category is resolved and we have a, a, a one disc in each section, or none if nobody went into one, but that's probably very unlikely, if one player has more of the sections than any other player, they get a victory token. And these are your goal for the game. Then you do this the same for the engineering and promotion set, uh, categories. And then each player in turn order can reveal cards for the bottom section, the trend section on their card. Each section on their trend that contains one of their discs gets an additional disc. Um, if they happen to have all three of the sections covered on their trend card, then instead they get a victory token. So you can get some extra money or a victory token. Okay, then all the discs in the model section are put in the bag and one will be drawn. That disc is going to go into the car of the year section down here. And all the winners remaining discs from the bag also go in the car of the year section. All other discs from the bag go into the return pool. So the trend is going to allow you to have extra discs, not just bring extra discs into the game, which is one factor of it, but also extra discs that might go into the car of the year section. It increases your chances of getting that, and it increases uh, the amount of discs you get in there. Other people's discs, these are already winning discs, will go into the return pool. And you do this also for engineering and promotion. Uh, after all the categories have been done, all the discs in the car of the year pool are then placed in the bag and one is drawn. The player who it belongs to gets a victory point and then all the discs from that draw go into the return pool. Now it's time to rinse before we repeat. Uh, at the end of the year, you get all your discs that are in the return pool back in your pool. These are now allocatable. You have to fill this. If you can't fill this, something terrible happens. You go bankrupt. Um, in that case, you lose a victory token if you have one, and all your saved cards. You then discard your company profile card, draw a new one, and start again with the allotment full, six discs here instead of the ten that you start the game with. Hey, the world's getting tougher. And... Uh, do, 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 do. I don't know what else. There's something else, but... Um, okay. If you ended up with six or more tokens left after you fill this, your company's been financially successful and you have cash here. If you end up with less than six tokens after you fill this, you get a total of six in here. You are taking government subsidies, and that's okay. In fact, that may be what you want to try to aim for, uh, except that like it's kind of cool to have extra discs. Now remember, you don't have to play all of these and you don't have to play all of these, but it behooves you to win and have your tokens refreshed. And largely you can probably manage that if you can put big enough claims on given locations because most of your tokens will go back to the return pool then. You don't have to fill everything with selective, do you? Nope. Um, and the game will go at the end of three turns, whoever has the most victory points wins. If two people are tied, whoever has the most discs, i.e. income, etc., cetera, uh, wins out of the tied players. And do, do, do. you don't worry about government subsidies or bankruptcies at, that, at the last turn. 
uh, it, in terms of uh, comparing how many discs you have for victory. But you will lose a victory point if you went bankrupt that turn. Um, is that it? I think so. So we'll give this a shot and send it up. 